Okay. Hello. Welcome, everybody. Today, we're going to be exploring Adobe Express, and we have a guest with us, which I'll let her introduce herself in just a moment. Um, but since you're watching online, I just want you to take a moment as you're watching this recording and just think about what is your experience with Adobe Express? How have you used it in your learning environment? If you want, you can go ahead and pause the video and kind of think about that on your own for a moment. Okay. Great. So today we're going to be recording this. You're watching it. Um, this is just a reminder for me, but we have gone ahead and recorded this. So thanks for being here and we'll make this information available to you as well. Just as a reminder, our professional development norms are to be committed, be responsible, be respectful, and be safe. So pick a norm today that you're going to focus on, especially since you're watching this recording after, and think, how are you going to be actively participating? How are you going to be a learner? And how are you going to connect with the ideas that are here today, even though you're watching it after the fact? Perfect. Okay, thanks. Um, hopefully you had a chance to pick that in your head. If you need more time, feel free to pause. Um, today we have one live person here with us and I'm going to, I just keep building up to it because I'm excited that she's here. But, um, as you're here, if you have questions or comments, feel free to send me an email. My name is Emma Moss and I'm happy to answer questions and forward them onto Shell so that she can have them as well. But just excited to be able to learn today and glad that you're watching with us. So today what we're working on is we are going to be talking about Adobe Express, give some examples about what you can create with Adobe Express and after, at the end, we're going to have you pause for a second and just plan out how we're going to be able to use this in your classroom and how can that apply to you. Today, we're looking at instructional content that's aligned with our Utah core standards, and we're going to look at how Adobe Express can support some things that you can do in your classroom and in creating and having your students create to demonstrate their learning. So just as a brief introduction, my name is Emma Moss. I'm a digital teaching and learning specialist here in Canyon School District. I love supporting teachers, especially in using digital tools like Adobe Express. And my email is on here, just emma.moss at canyonsdistrict.org. So if you have questions afterwards, feel free to send me an email and I'd love to connect with you. And now without further ado, I'm gonna turn the time over today to our guest who's gonna be here helping us. And I'm just so excited. I just had the chance to get to know her and talk about her role at Adobe. And I'm sure she has some great things to share with you. So I'm gonna stop my screen share and turn it over to Shell. Thanks, Emma. Hi, everyone. My name is Shell. Um, I am an education evangelist at Adobe, which is a, just a very fancy way of saying I am a former educator, just like all of you are current educators. I have a background in teaching kindergarten and fourth grade, and most recently was spending some time in higher ed, but super, super excited to be joining the teacher community. Um, if any of you have had the opportunity to meet or chat with Martine, um, he has been working with Canyons, and now I have the amazing privilege of getting to work with all of you. So please, as we go through this, if there's any questions um, or things pop up, as Emma said, you can reach out to her. You can also reach out to me directly. My email is shell at adobe.com. Um, you can find me on Instagram, all the things. So feel free. Don't be shy. I love making new teacher friends. Um, so am I good to go ahead and share my screen, Emma? I think so. I think I've given you right. So you should be good to go for that. Let's, let's try it. Let's see what happens here. All right. Oh, well, it would help if I allowed it to share my screen. One. We've all been through that process of figuring out how to zoom share screen. Don't worry. All Especially right. I think it's going to work now. Let's see if it lets me. Okay. Are we good? Can you see it? We're good. I can see it. Yes. All right. Everyone, this, if you have not met Adobe Express yet, welcome. Um, Emma, do you know the best way for them to get into Express at your school district? Yeah. So we have a um, single link button that hopefully teachers have. If they need access to, on how to do that, you can go to canadasdistrict.org slash DTL, and it will show you how to log into Adobe Express there. Awesome. Thank you. I'm still learning all my new districts and how everything works. So Adobe Express is really wonderful. And there's about a million different things that you can do with it. And I actually used it in my own classroom just this last year. Um, you know, I, you could make all kinds of things, anything ranging from short form video 
to graphics, to infographics, to presentations, there's drawing opportunities. Um, you know, we, I, I have done multiple like full day trainings on this, but today we're going bite size. So I'm going to do a real quick overview and then we're going to jump into a little project here. So this is the homepage for Adobe Express. The fun thing is it just starts with what do you want to make, right? That's, that's our prompt. That's our question that we kick everything off with. And so if there's something in particular that you're thinking, okay, I really want to either for yourself, maybe you want to make a worksheet or maybe you want to, you know, develop something else that, or maybe you want to make a presentation that you can use in your own classroom. These are all things you can do. But the part that I get really excited about is what can we get your students to do? So one of the most popular things that I have seen is um, building a web page or a portfolio. And what's really wonderful about our Edu accounts is when you make a web page or a portfolio, it's all just self-contained. It, it, when a student makes a web page through Adobe Express, it does not go and live out on the big wide internet. It's just something that there's just a, it's a protected link and nobody else has access to it. Um, so these are all things, when you look right here, these are things that they suggest for you. And if you were to click on it, you can create from scratch and it would just start a blank web page. Now, the really great things are there's these quick actions as well. So this is all just stuff that can kind of springboard your brain and get you some ideas of things that you can work on. Um, however, if you wanted to make, let's say a poster, you can browse templates. So if I were to click on browse templates, this will pop up this whole thing of different types of posters that I could make. And if I wanted, you know, something more specific, like I wanted to do an animal biography kind of poster, this will give me lots of places to start. And so either you could choose a template and provide it to your class, or you could let them choose their own templates. It's kind of up to you. I've seen teachers do it both ways. Um, and so for today, we're going to go ahead and do this red panda one. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and open that up and you're welcome to try this along with me making your own poster. Um, for me, I like red pandas, but I think I'm going to switch it up today just so I can show you all the fun other things that you can do. Um, so let's go ahead and do Emma, what's your favorite animal? Ooh, my favorite is an elephant. I actually was just, I'm following all you along. I, love it. I was about to search for one. So yes, mine is an elephant. All right. So I'm going to switch this to elephant, but when I, when I type it in, it is ginormous and takes up way too much space and doesn't look like the word elephant. So I'm going to drag this text box to make it actually fit and just kind of do a little bit of resizing here. And then it's not an elephant panda. So I'll just delete that second word. And if you look, you'll see my word elephant is kind of hiding behind this picture. I'm going to change the picture in a little bit, but if I wanted this to come forward over here on the right side of my screen is these are your layers. So imagine you're making an actual like collage in real life. You can, you can replace your layers. It's like before you glue them down, right? Once you export your picture at the end, that's glued down, but right now you can move your layers around still. So if I look where I have the word elephant and I want it to go above the picture, I'm just gonna click and drag it up above and it pops right up. Super easy once you know how to do it. That's always the trick, right? And then my name's not Mary, so I'll go ahead and change that. And it's not gonna be a very great elephant poster if it has a picture of a red panda. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on my red panda here now, this is one of my favorite things. This weird little recycle looking button under image lets you replace an image exactly the way that it is. So if you look at this particular picture that's already within the template, it doesn't have the background on it, right? And so if I do replace image here, it should, sometimes it will glitch, but it should get rid of that background for me again. So I'm going to go here and look for an elephant. And I think I like this picture of the elephant. Actually, this one, they look really happy. But for some reason, it made it. See, on this one, it switched it because it was a horizontal picture that it was trying to put in a vertical format. So I'm going to undo. 
And I'm gonna look for a vertical picture. Interesting, it did it again. So what this is telling me is that probably that red panda, when it was originally put in this was a sideways picture. So you win some, you lose some, you guys get to see me actually making mistakes in real time. So that's exciting. So instead of replacing it, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to push delete on my computer. I got rid of that picture entirely, but this gives me the opportunity to show you how to put in your own picture. So I'm gonna go over here to media. This is kind of your toolbar that just has everything that you can do. And it's definitely worth time to just go and play with it and explore. Um, if you haven't had a chance to just kind of mess around with it before you give it to students. Um, but I'll go over to media. And I don't know if you guys, do you guys have gen generative AI enabled in your district? You do? Okay. Yeah. Yes. So that this is one way that you could go ahead and do it. You could type, say that you want an elephant and I want mine to look photorealistic. And so I'm just gonna, I typed in elephant. This is all using generative AI technology. Um, which actually is going to be getting upgraded within um, Express soon. So that will be exciting to see. It's always like, what's it going to look like when I'm done with it? So I guess we're going to, we're going to see what happens here. If it ends up looking like an elephant or not. Okay. It did a pretty good job, actually. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I'm not, I'm not mad about it. So I clicked off and I still have this background and I don't really want it. So I'm going to go over here to the remove background tool and it'll think for a minute before it uses AI technology to remove that background for me. Kind of fun. And if I want to change my background color, I just go up to here where it says background color, super easy. Maybe I want to make it more of like a pinky color. I could go and do it my own custom color as well if I'm into that. I'll do a nice blue. I love doing these because I say to go make things. It's fun. Um, if I wanted to replace this image, I could do that as well, but I kind of like it. It's kind of jungly. So I think I'm going to, I'm going to let it be. Then down here, I have all of my facts, right? Now, the trouble is if I wanted to get rid of what this says about red panda, this is a problem that I see teachers run into all the time. They click on something, but they can't, Oh, well, this one let me, but sometimes it doesn't let you edit it. And it's because this whole thing is grouped. So this is my Adobe pro tip for you is notice if it's, if something's grouped, you can just push ungroup and then it will let you edit all the individual pieces. That one, sometimes people don't always see it first. So I think instead of writing a bunch of stuff, which I could do, right. I could go ahead and change all my text if I want. I think I'm going to go ahead and add some pictures because that's kind of fun. So let's think elephants, they live in the savanna. I'm going to find not Savannah, Georgia. That's not what I want. Maybe I'll, I do see some in there, but I'm going to type in African Savannah and see if we see something that's a little bit more. Well, that one has a picture of an elephant in it. So that seems perfect for my needs and I'll resize it, but I'm kind of looking and it's just kind of not quite the right size for what I want. Like it's too wide. And if you see these little white bars, it means you can just kind of manually crop it however you like. Um, so it doesn't have to be like using the fancy crop tool or anything. It's just like you do it how it feels good to you and until you like the way that it looks. If I wanted to add other things here, I could, but I want to show you some other stuff in Express. So if you want to keep working on your poster, um, since you're watching this later, go ahead and pause and keep working on your poster. Um, if you do decide to make one, I would love to see it. So feel free to share. Um, at any point, that's always fun to do. Other cool things in Express that I wanted to show you. Um, that is not it actually. I have too many things open. Anybody else ever live that way? That's my life. I'm Absolutely. always like, you, you get, you get me. Okay. So many tabs. Yes. I oh my gosh. 
I like tried to close out as many, a whole bunch of them before I jumped on here, but there's still always a ton of things. Um, so if you look at your homepage that we started with, there's this section called educator resources. Another Adobe pro tip for you. If you don't see that on yours, that means you are not logged into your educator account. So it has to be with your school email. If you have a personal account, this won't be on it. So if you go on there and you're like, oh my gosh, it's not on there. It's broken. It's probably not. It's probably your email. But if you are logged in with your email and you don't see that, let us know because that would be a problem. So if you click on that, there's all kinds of fun things that you can jump into. There's creative challenges that we post or that we, that we have a whole team that creates these every single month. Um, and we encourage teachers to use them in their classrooms. Like this particular one, it talks about this really cool tool called animate from audio. If you haven't gotten a chance to check that out, I highly recommend it. It's a bit, um, more time intensive to show. So that's why I didn't choose to show that one today. Um, but definitely recommend popping in and taking a look at that. But that's what our challenge is for the month of January is setting some 2024 goals. Um, and so feel free to do that yourself, do it with your students. It's a fun way to, to get an idea of what Animate from Audio is all about. And it's super, super engaging. Students get really into it because you know they can record things and make and make a little movie without actually having to show their face on camera, which for a lot of kids that feels really stressful to have to do. And so it takes the pressure off of them in a lot of ways. Um, and then as you go down, there's other ideas of ways that you can incorporate Adobe Express into your curriculum. And this is, you know, K-12, there's all kinds of things in here um, that are just for you, curated um, ideas and lesson plans, templates, all of those things. As you keep scrolling, there's all kinds of other templates that you can use. Some of them are more geared toward you, um, you know, creating quizzes or having uh, some brainstorming opportunities for students or exit tickets, things like that. Um, there's templates for all of it and they're all totally editable. And one of the things I wanted to show you today, let's see, I'll just click on a random one. What's 200 days of school? Former kindergarten teacher. I can't turn that excitement off. Um, so as you see, it is all in English right now, right? But what I can do is I can go up to this translate button and it's detecting that this page is in English and I can actually make a duplicate version of this same worksheet in a different language. It's all powered by Google Translate. So, you know, take it with a grain of salt. It's not going to be a 100% perfect, beautiful translation. Yet, I hope that that's something that we continue to refine and improve and make stronger. But let's say I wanted to put it in Spanish. Um, and there's a whole bunch of languages that you could explore. It'll duplicate it, it'll translate it, it'll take a minute to think about it. And then we've got it in Spanish. And I do still have the English version. It just made another copy of it um, within the document. So that's one of my fun pro tips for you. And then the last one that I just wanted to share is back in that educator resources. If it will let me go. Oh no. Well, that's okay. Um, within those educator resources, for some reason, mine's not opening now, which is lovely. I love that when that happens. Um, but there is also the Adobe Education Exchange. There's a link to it within that educator resources page. And within that, there are so many more lesson plans and curricular ideas and, you know, just ways to springboard your creativity and also introduce creativity to your students. And since I can't show you that, I'll show you one more cool random thing. So let's pretend I've been working on this. Clearly I have not, but this just happens to be the one that I have open. Um, if I wanted to get my teacher's feedback on it, let's pretend I'm a student here. So I can go up to, um, there's multiple ways I can do it. I could share it and invite collaborators this way. You can also invite collaborators just with this little button right here, which I find most students will go to the little plus button 
that they see instead of going to share. It's just a little bit easier. So I'm just going to share it. I'm going to share it with myself, which is lovely because this is my example account. But if I, let's pretend I'm my own teacher, right? And for you, if a student starts typing something in here, the emails that will auto-populate, like for me, it's coming up to other people who have demo accounts with Adobe. But for you, if a student were to type in someone's name, it's gonna only populate emails within your district. So it's not gonna show random people at Adobe or things like that. Um, but you can share it um, directly with, somebody else. And then that person can come in and they can leave comments. They can even jump in and fully collaborate and work on a project with you. Um, so this is great for if, you know, you have students working on a group project together, or if you as a teacher want to jump in and give feedback on something, or you want to work with your student on something at the same time. Um, it just makes, you know, collaborating that much easier. And it's nice because it's, you know, it's, it's the Google Docs of creativity in, in a lot of ways, I think, in the way that that revolutionized a lot. This, um, this gives you opportunities to be creative in a different way, I guess. So that's, that's my really fast overview of what Adobe Express is. Um, I'll stop sharing, but um, everyone, please, like I said, feel free to reach out to me, reach out to Emma. Super excited to get to know all of you. And if you're interested in, you know, doing more fun, creative stuff. We have a whole community of creative educators that would love to welcome you. So don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you. That was so perfect. I just wanted to share as you were talking, um, you talked about uh, these projects. So there's one there right now that you have, that's like the AI alter ego. So here's mine. I uh, love you. What with your elephant? <laughs> so there's elephant, super fast, super quick for me to do, but really fun for students. And like you got to know like a little bit about me. Like it has like some technology infused to this elephant, like this have anyways. Um, I also made that poster that you were talking about. So here's my elephant. Oh here's my gosh. My I love that. I love the facts. That's just the best. <laughs> yes, they, they weigh a lot. They weigh a ton. And then I had some plants and they're in Africa and they're peaceful and happy as well. When I Googled like behavior of elephants, but I, what I love about Adobe express and as you were talking, um, what I love about what it can do is it's just like, I get to be so creative for like just a moment of like, here's more about me. And it's such a great way to engage with your students. And I'm glad that you pointed out like the templates and the community. Like if you haven't checked those out, there are so many resources there to help. And I love that Adobe provides that. So um, just as a quick wrap up, wrap up, there is, or make sure that if you want credit for this, that you go to our bite size PD link here. Um, and so you can get relicensure credit for watching this and engaging with it. Um, if you have feedback, you can put bit.ly slash feedback for Emma. And I will absolutely forward that on to Shell so that we, cause I'm sure that she wants to improve just as much as I do, but thank you so much for being here, uh, virtually. And thank you, Shell, especially for being here. Um, and hopefully you enjoyed watching because I did. I was having fun in the background making and creating. So thanks again. We'll see you in the future and on Bite Size PD. Thanks, everyone. Thanks.